Hello everyone and welcome to a Get Ready With Me where I am going to be getting ready and simultaneously updating you all on something that I didn't know you all even cared to get an update on. So thank you to April particularly and the 44 of you that thumbs up to her comment. April asks, can you comment on your process with skin picking since you were on TV? Did you attend the CB therapy? I already have on my base makeup because I'm doing a weekly wear at the moment. Ew, fuzzy in the cream contour. But yeah, I've still got plenty of makeup to put on here that I can do when I'm talking you guys through this. Um, yeah, I feel like I have talked about this before. I don't know, maybe it's just some new people somehow found that video of me being on the doctors. Yes, for those of you who don't know, multiple years ago, I think it was in 2018. I can't say exactly for sure. It was two apartments ago though. It might have been 2017, but I feel like it was 2018. Like I said, I don't remember, but it was a day like any other day of the week. I believe it was a Monday. Well, hello everyone. Good morning. Welcome to my kitchen floor. This is just the only place that I have light in my apartment right now. I could go set up my studio lights, but like that... I'm so tired. <laughs> it is officially 3.39 in the morning. I have been up since always. I haven't gone to bed yet, and I've got a full day ahead of me. This has been a whirlwind, uh, so I got invited. Let me give you a little time clock here. Monday night, I would say around eight o'clock, I got an email from a lovely lady out in California saying, hi, I work on the show The Doctors and we wanna have you on. Can you like possibly fly out this week? So I sent her an email back on Monday night and said I would love to hear some details and so she, we had a conversation, it takes two to tango and to talk in a conversation, right? Yes, it does. We had a phone conversation, technically this afternoon, yesterday afternoon, it was Tuesday afternoon, and she did a little interview and everything, and then she got it all set up and got the A-OK -okay from her, like, head producer or whatever, and they want to fly me out tomorrow, which is actually today, and it's in the morning, so that then I can arrive in California, also in the morning, and film like the, would it be considered the behind the scenes, but kind of like, you know, how they do in shows where it's like, so now we're about to talk about so-and-so's story with such-and-such, and, such. and then it cuts to like, hi, my name is Cassie, and I've had dermatillomania since I was a wee, wee child, and all that stuff. So we're filming those things today, and then Thursday, I have nothing. <laughs> so I'm going to be exploring and then on Friday is the actual filming of the show and then I fly home. <laughs> I'm so like I'm such a stressed out excited bundle of things right now like I don't even feel like a human. What? I don't I don't think I ever thought I was going to be on TV much less be on TV for a problem that I have. <laughs> Like, it would be one thing if it was like, like, I'm honored, please don't get me wrong. Like, obviously I would not have said okay if I was not comfortable talking about this, but like, if ever I thought I was gonna be on TV, I guess I thought it would have been for something like, cool, like, hey, look at what Cassie did. Instead of like, hey, look at what Cassie does. <laughs> you know, that kind of a thing. But that's okay, it is very important to spread awareness for this kind of a thing, so I am happy to be the face of it if need be, or at least be an advocate. Would it be an advocate if I also have the thing? Either way, I'm gonna go on. I'm gonna talk about my skin picking, my excoriation disorder. It hasn't been the greatest lately, as you can see, I think. But that's okay, that's why I'm going, and we'll see. I really haven't, like, watch-watched The Doctors before. I know what it is, and I feel like whenever I would be at the gym, like, even in college, or, like, when I moved back home here to Minnesota, it would always be on, on the gym TVs. So I feel like I would see it then, but I don't think I've ever watched it with the sound on. You know what I mean? It would just be up on the TV with the subtitles or whatever. But yeah, I guess I'm gonna be there, and I'm gonna meet The Doctors. And by the time you guys see this, it probably already would have happened. <laughs> it's just, it's so incredible that YouTube could even 
bring little old me, little old Cassie from Minnesota, <laughs> this kind of an opportunity. Like, I don't even... I can't, I can't process. I haven't processed yet. I probably won't process until I get home on Friday night. But, that being said, I am gonna go. I need to go to my dad's house. He is going to be watching my kitties for me, so I'm very, very grateful to him that he is able to do that for me. So I need to drop my keys off at his place and give him a hug goodbye, and then I need to go to my mom's place because my mom is coming with because they wanted to interview like someone in my life or whatever as well so that you can get like a outsider's perspective type of a thing about my dermatillomania and yeah then my stepdad is gonna drive us to the airport drop us off I hopefully will get something to eat even though maybe that wouldn't be the greatest idea I'll probably just puke it up but then I'll be on the plane I've never been able to sleep on an airplane before but maybe slash hopefully today will be the day <sighs> Here's hoping, I guess, but if anything, I also need to do my eye makeup while I'm on the plane. So hopefully I just sleep for most of it. Not all of it. But yeah, okay. I think I've rambled enough. Here we go. This is my first time ever going to California. I'm really, really... Ah, I'm so... I'm... Ah. I think I said this already, but I'm a lot of things right now. Mostly tired. But I'm also very, very excited, and I'm very excited to bring you guys along. So... I think that's it. I will see you all very soon. Bye. I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you. Hi, Hi baby. I'm gonna miss you too. Ah, oh, the cutest fluffed brothers that ever did live. Don't forget about me, okay? I'll be home very soon. He says, okay, mom, bye, see you later. And so off I flew to the doctors in California, good old Hollywood, and I was super nervous. And I did a little bit of vlogging because I thought I could turn that into a vlog. But then when I got there, they make you sign papers saying that you like won't talk about the show and whatnot. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Is is there a time limit on that? I'm not saying anything negative about their show, so I think what I'm talking about is completely fine. Either way, here I am. I was on the show. Uh, the camera makes you... I don't know why people say the camera makes you gain 10 pounds. It's more like 100, and I really... I, I had a hard time watching that episode for that reason. <laughs> I know, you would think it would be about me telling the masses on TV about this horrible mental disorder that I have, dermatillomania, but no, I was more concerned about the fact that I looked real fat. And then it didn't help that the comments were only commenting about how fat I was in the segment. <laughs> oh, thankfully, Cassie has grown up since then and has done a lot of personal reflection and work and all of that. And not only have I gotten fatter, but I have also gotten much more comfortable in my skin, and I really don't care anymore. It is what it is, you know? So they film at a bad angle, which they do. Those cameras were never even at eye level. They were always down. <laughs> Unflattering. But yeah, uh, that was a thing that happened. God, this pimple hurts so bad. And they provided me with two months of therapy, which I was super grateful for. Definitely made me cry when they provided me with that because it was one of those things that at the time I didn't feel like I could afford it and I was also too scared, you know? And so it was the push that I needed and I got the therapy here in the Twin Cities and I continued on with therapy, I think for probably like... <sighs> four to six months, I definitely did it beyond what the show provided me with. And then I stopped when I felt like I had gotten everything I could out of therapy. And I took lots of tools with me from my therapist. She was amazing and it changed my life. I mean, going on that show absolutely changed my life. I have struggled with dermatillomania since I can remember. I mean, I talk about it in the very first video that I ever did on dermatillomania that, I mean, some of my first memories involve my skin picking. Mainly people telling me it's gross, it's a bad habit, it's this, it's that, and you know, it's it's more than that. And at the time, I don't think it was, I don't know, was it even a word, a term, dermatillomania when I was growing up? I don't know, but it's in the OCD spectrum of things. It is similar to trichotillomania, which I think a lot of people have heard about, even if they haven't heard of dermatillomania. 
trichotillomania being the pulling out of hair, but dermatillomania being the picking of your skin, whether there's an actual imperfection there or not. I shouldn't even say imperfection, a blemish, what have you. It was really bad. It got to a point, especially when I was in Boston living by myself and I was really stressed with grad school, it was really, really, really bad, my skin picking. And even once I got home for a good couple years at least, until I got the therapy, it was really bad. I mean, you can see it in that first video I ever did for dermatillomania. One moment. While I'm not perfect, I still struggle with it, but it's to a much lesser degree. I, like I said, I was able to use the tools that were provided to me through CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy for anyone who doesn't know. And it was really hard. It was not fun doing the work, but once you do the work, Thankfully, if you are committed to it, it's something that sticks with you and I still use those tools to this day. You know, I have done many follow-up videos, like I said, on this, so if you want ugh, more in-depth tips and tricks, I would say check those videos out. I will do my best to link them down below. And, you know, mainly it's a lot of cognition. It's a lot of being cognitive about it. At least with dermatillomania, a lot of it you don't realize you're doing. And so a lot of the therapy had to do with me really being cognitive about my hands throughout the day. From the second I woke up, because that was one of the first things I would do when I wake up, is go over my skin and check my skin and pick at my skin, to the moment I went to bed, because it was something I did before bed as well. And all throughout the day, writing down what my emotions were at that point, was I thinking about it, was I not, how long did it last, all of that, it really is eye-opening and frustrating to have to document like that. She had me do that for a week straight straight and I was exhausted, but like I said, it helped me realize the routines that my brain had come up with with my dermatillomania in order to self-soothe myself. From there, we were able to come up with things that would be able to distract me or take place of the skin picking. So anywhere that I knew I was going to be tempted to pick, be it in my bed or on the toilet, that was one of them. Walking past the mirror in the bathroom, let's set up some safeguards for you. Let's put a nightlight in the bathroom so you don't have the lighting to look in the mirror. Let's put a sticky note on the mirror or the light switch. You don't even have to write anything on the sticky note. Just knowing that you're putting that sticky note there to remind you that, hey, this is a picking zone, it will trigger your brain so that you're like, okay, at least now I'm on guard. I know that this is somewhere I might pick. Let's be mindful of it, yeah? Let's put a fidget toy, you know, next to my bed. Let's set up the ABC game in my brain when I'm on the toilet so that I can look for things. You know, let's look for something that starts with an A. I can't really think of anything in the bathroom, but appliance. Okay, great. B, bath. C, cat watching me pee. D, door, you know, going through the ABCs. That's a very common cognitive technique. And just knowing that I had these things in my arsenal, my fidget toys, all of that, it helped. It really did help. And I can't believe it's even possible for me to say it, but I don't need a lot of that anymore. Like I've been doing that for so many years now since I got the therapy that new habits have been formed. Did it take many, many years? Yeah but new habits have been formed so that I don't have to worry about that. And I'm not perfect. I slip up still. I mean, you can see especially like right now when it's around my period and I've got more hormonal breakouts and they're the ones that are deep under the skin and normally, at least growing up a few years ago, however, whenever long ago it was, I would pick and I would pick severely because they were the under the skin ones. And the fact that I can sit here and just have kind of surface level tears to my skin because of picking, because I'm not perfect. I still have my moments where I pick still and it's something I'm working on. It's not something that's gonna be cured instantly. And like I said, just the fact that I'm able to work on it and say that it's a work in progress and also to see the progress that I have made over the years, it's incredible to me. I mean, if you would have told me back when I first filmed that video on dermatillomania, looking at my arms there and being able to look at my arms here, 
like that is so cool to be and I don't give myself that credit enough you know now I just look at my arms and I can see like a few little spots where I might have picked a little thing and I beat myself up over it and to think that even a few years ago or four years ago however long it was I would have looked at these arms and been jealous and wished that I could have been at that point like that's so cool to me like it's really it's huge it's huge and I truly didn't know that I'd be able to get to that point ever but it is possible I am living breathing proof of it and therapy was what I needed in order to get there like I give all of my credit I shouldn't say all of because it was a lot of me putting in the hard work too but if I would have never gotten therapy I certainly would not be where I am today I wouldn't be able to sit here without gel nails on to stop me from picking I wouldn't be able to sit here and talk to you guys about this without crying like it's it still is emotional to me don't get me wrong but I'm in just such a better place with it that my emotions are just so happy and every now and then don't get me wrong like I do still <laughs> every now and then when I recognize how cool it is to me how clear even with a couple blemishes my skin is like how cool that is I still do tear up every now and then but the fact that this has become my new normal it's amazing and I have to you know as much as I give my therapist the credit because she helped me and led me along the way and guided me here I also have to give myself the credit too you know breaking a habit that had been with me for 25 plus years shoot that's a lot of hard work and it continues to be hard work you know progress with this stuff is far from linear we will always have our screw-ups and setbacks but as long as you continue moving forward that's all that matters that is true success is being able to pick yourself up after a failure or a setback and being able to keep trying and keep moving forward and progressing from there. And like I said, I'm just, I'm so thankful, I'm so grateful, and without YouTube, it would have never been a thing. So thank you guys for sticking with me throughout the years and for wanting me to get the help and for sticking with me while I was getting the help and continue to go through things. So yeah, genuinely, thank you guys for continuing to care and continuing to check up on me. Like I said, I had no idea this was something anyone still cared to hear about from me, but hey, if you guys wanna hear me talk about something, let me know and I mean especially something like this when it comes to mental health or whatever I would love to I might not always have the most in-depth things to say but I can certainly let you guys know how I'm doing and let you guys know what my journey has been like and where I am at the moment and just like I said the fact that any of you care it's it's really heartwarming for me so thank you very much and I just hope this is what you were looking for. <laughs> like I said, I know I don't have like a ton to update you guys on, but I certainly have come a long way and it, it really makes me happy to be able to share that with you guys. So thank you guys for checking in with me. Thank you for hanging out while I did a super simple get ready with me look here for today. I hope you guys are all doing well. I really truly mean that. It has been my outro for the longest time because I mean it when I say it. I know how hard it is to struggle with your mental health in a multitude of different ways and so I, I just I know what it's like to be at very 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 low points but I also know what it's like to be at high points too and even if you're not at either of those maybe you're just in the middle as long as you are doing well and you're doing the best that you can and you're still moving forward that is all that matters and even if you're not even if you're still taking steps back just know that there is hope and you you can you can change your trajectory so thank you guys for watching like i said and i hope you guys are all doing well and until next time stay well until then bye